right guys the title of this is called in this work papists and protestants unite this is actually a quote that is taken from the great controversy it says in great controversy page 607 the loud cry chapter that the church appeals to the strong arm of civil power and in this work papists and protestants unite as the movement for sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided the law will be invoked against commandment keepers they will be threatened with fines and imprisonment so in the movement for Sunday, we're told that Papists and Protestants will unite. And I think that we're going to take a look here at some Papists and some Protestants just to see who is uniting together and what this movement is. Now, as we look at the news right now, it tells us that Bernie Sanders wants the U.S. to adopt a 32-hour work week. What does the Bible say? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work and rest the seventh day. Well, this is about the Sabbath. But this is not about the true Sabbath. This is about Sunday keeping. And so we'll take a look as we continue. But Bernie Sanders is wanting a 32 hour work week. And he's bringing a bill to the Congress of the United States to be pushed into law. And the Senate is overseeing this. And we'll come back to this in a second to see what the Senate says about this. But here's Bernie Sanders talking about a potential 32 hour work week. The 40 hour week, as I recall, was established in 1940. All right, that is 83, 84 years ago. There have been a few modest changes in the economy over the last <laughs> 84 years. <laughs> and what's gone on is workers today are far more productive. I mean, think about all of the technology and equipment that's out there today. So the question that we're going to be asking tomorrow is who benefits from all of the changes that have taken place uh, in the economy, the new technology, and by the way, the artificial intelligence and robotics that's sitting around the corner that it's going to transform the entire economy. So what we are saying is with all of this new technology and increase in worker productivity, workers should benefit from these changes, not just large corporations and the stockholders. Sure. So many corporatists and corporations are benefiting large corporations, large people that are in charge and not many workers are benefiting from obviously the 40 hour work week many 40 hour people who are subject to this 40 hour work week are suffering they're unable to pay their bills and they're being pushed to the limits and so this sounds all good this sounds good to most americans and most people today that a 32 hour work week would be nice for most people so it's probably going to gain a lot of traction now in in the Senate, they've been discussing this bill, and um, I want you to hear what Senator Murphy has to say for the 32 hour work week. What is the purpose of the 32 hour work week? Let's look at this. It is a pretty wild thing happening in America today. In 2000, 70% of Americans belong to a religious institution, but today that number is 50%. This has been a pretty precipitous decline in the um, ability or willingness of Americans to you know, go to church or to a religious institution on a regular basis. And I think that has lots of broad impacts in our society. Um, but there are a lot of reasons for that. But one of them is that Americans just have less free time. Um, when you have to work 70 hours to get the same standard of living for your family that 40 hours would have gotten you a few decades ago, you don't have time to go to Wednesday night Bible study. You might not have the ability to even attend church or services on a Sunday. Um, you can talk about church if you want or if you don't want, but um, it, it is just true that some of the, the leisure time activities, some of the institutions that Americans found value and meaning in are less accessible when you have to work these long hours. Okay, so what we're seeing here and hearing is that church attendance is on the decline. And the reason that it's on the decline is because people are working too many hours. And so in order to increase church attendance and some of the Sunday keeping, they could push for a 32 hour work week, which is going to lead to Sunday laws. We'll come back to this as we continue. But I want to I want you to hear the response of some of these who are advocating for this future law and what they are saying some of the words that they're using with respect to these things and uh let's just listen to this this man here his response i'd love to just hear your thoughts on that yeah i mean it, you know one of the biggest it's one of the things we talked about with the 32-hour work week when we put that in our contract talks was the fact that we wanted to create work-life balance 
So what is the purpose? It is for work-life balance. That's what they're talking about here. Work-life oh, balance. And you know what? When you have a work-life balance, you'll be able to go to church on Sundays. That's what it's going to lead to. Now, ch Sunday church attendance is down. And well, here's one other senator who's talking about this. And she says that maybe we should make Sunday church attendance mandatory. This is another senator talking about the Sunday issue and not being able to go to church. And the reason why morality is down in the nation. Let's listen carefully to what she has to say. Knives, or you can use whatever. It's the soul that is corrupt. And how we get back to a moral rebirth in this country, I don't know, since we are slowly eroding religion at every opportunity that we have. Uh, probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday to see if we can get back to having a more having a moral rebirth a moral rebirth society needs a moral rebirth today and a lot of this moral rebirth the, the necessity of it comes because obviously there is a lot of immorality and because immorality is overrunning the country maybe for sunday church attendance would actually bring the country back to its knees and start they would start to pray as some of these men are starting to do and realizing the immorality that is in the country but in the great controversy page 587 which was written 120 years ago it tells us that this very class put forth the claim that the fast spreading corruption is largely attributable to the desecration of the so-called christian sabbath and that the enforcement of sunday observance would greatly improve the morals of society so the moral rebirth would come if sunday observance were forced by law it sounds very similar to what that lady just said and you know what's interesting when you think about it in the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, it talks about the mark of the beast. It talks about speaking. That the beast spoke a certain way. It spoke great things against the Most High. And it had power to continue 40 and 2 months. And Revelation 13 2 tells you that power was given by the dragon. That this beast received its power, seat, and authority from the dragon. And this power that it exercised in Revelation 13 12, we're told, would be exercised by a second beast, a lamb-like beast, that would eventually speak like a dragon. And it's going to speak like a dragon. Revelation 13, verse 11, exercising all the same power of the first beast, which was church and state power, coming from the papacy during the Dark Ages. Revelation 12 tells us that the Roman, the Roman Republic gave power to the papacy. Revelation 13. And the Roman Republic was during the time of Jesus when it tried to kill Jesus when he was born, Revelation 12, 5. And so now we see in Revelation 13, 2, that this Roman Republic is power to the papacy and it continues and has power, church and state power during that time, from that time. And uh, that's what's about to happen in America. I want you to hear what Donald Trump has to say to the churches attending this nat National Religious Broadcasters Organization. Listen to this is bite back on that but for four years we went through uh, a great period you were able to speak and we're going to make that on a permanent basis you're going to be able to do remember speak it shall speak like a dragon revelation 13 11 it's going to have power it's going to exercise all the power of the second beast revelation or the first beast revelation 13 verse 12 listen again is bite back on that but for four years we went through uh, a great period you were able to speak and we're going to make that on a permanent basis. You're going to be able to do it because you're the people we want to hear from, the pastors and the ministers and the rabbis. The people in this room are the people we want to hear from, and they have to have a political voice. You know, if you think about it, you have men, you have women, and you have religion. If you look at it, you have more than the men, you have more than the women. You have such power, but you really, you weren't allowed to use that power and you're now allowed to use it. I get in there, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. It's going to bring back the churchgoer. I mean, you have to see. I don't like the charts when I see charts where they're going in the wrong direction. So very similar to what we read in Revelation chapter 13 too, the dragon gave his power. The state gave its power to the church, its power, seat, and authority. Revelation 17, we see a woman who gets a seat, sits on a red colored beast the scarlet colored beast so the dragon gave her her power her seat and her great authority it's talking about the state power with the kings of the earth giving power to the church 
so that the church can speak. And then when this creates, this creates like an image beast, a very church and state like power that is going to speak. And that's what we see here is the religions getting power from the state and they're going to speak. They're going to have a voice. And that's what Revelation 13, 11 says that it would speak like a dragon. Again, I'll quote from Great Controversy, page 606. Some of this was all predicted. But again, as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching, and the third angel will produce an effect which it could not have had before. So if you're looking around right now, you understand the question of enforcing Sunday observance is being widely agitated. It's being agitated in the Senate being agitated by Congress it's being agitated by all these all these liberals even like Bernie Sanders the 32 hour work week and and it's being agitated by by the right side Donald Trump and some others I'll come back to some of these things in further videos I'm going to make more videos on these things but regarding the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13 it says it's going to enforce the mark and the mark will be enforced well what is the mark of the beast According to the Papal Church itself, which is the beast, they tell us, of course, the Catholic Church claims that the chain Saturday, Sabbath, the Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority and religious things. Therefore, the mark of the papacy is the change from Saturday, Sabbath, to Sunday. They also tell us Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The church is above the Bible. So your authority, if you're a Christian, normally would be the Bible. That's your basic instructions before leaving earth, right? We understand that's our B-I-B-L-E. But as these people are telling us, Sunday is their mark. And it's not in the Bible. It's above the Bible. And so for most churches as well who follow in her footsteps, they would be the daughters of this woman who's apostatized and turned from her God. She's playing the harlot. But um, her daughters are doing the same thing. And they're adopting many of her doctrines, which the Bible calls the wine of Babylon. When you read that book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 28, 29. But again, back to Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is telling us about this 32 hour work week. It says a March 2023 poll conducted by Redfield and Wilton Strategies on behalf of Newsweek found that 71% of Americans support the idea of a four day work week. Only 4% oppose it. And furthermore, the United Auto Workers Union pushed for a 32-hour work week in negotiations for what they viewed as a better work-life balance. You'll notice the unions are involved here. <clears throat> Often unions, especially the United Workers Union, the United Auto Workers Union. And it says that they are pushing for better work-life balance. I'll come back to what this work-life balance is really about here in a second. But um, there is something that it all connects to it says in vatican news eu bishops call for nations to protect a work free sunday i just want you to read a little bit more of this article it says the alliance says this increases stress on workers affects their work life balance you notice that so what is sunday keeping going to help with it's going to help with their work life balance and then it says down below day of rest According to the network, which includes more than 100 national Sunday alliances, trade unions, lots of trade unions are involved, employer organizations, civil society associations, churches and religious communities in the European Union, a full day of rest per week is indispensable to recover. And of course, again, remember, this is for work-life balance. Sunday keeping is for work-life balance. And you'll notice even even the Senate was talking about that. The United States Senate even. So when you get down to why this 32 hour work week is being pushed on the people, you'll notice that it is all about work life balance. Again, the National Catholic Register, they tell us work life balance, advice for attaining peacefulness in daily routines and within our souls, keeping Sunday holy. Down below, we might start by evaluating how well we are keeping the holy the Sabbath. To keep Sunday holy is not a suggestion, but a commandment. So what is keeping Sunday holy about? Work-life balance. Again, from the National Catholic Register, they're telling us these things. It's about a work-life balance. Furthermore, even this EU Sunday Alliance, something similar. They're telling us the same thing today on the occasion of the 2023 European Day of Work-Free Sunday. You go into that, you'll read European 
Sunday Alliance calling for resting time to improve the mental health of workers. You can see it right here, improve mental health of workers. It's about a work-life balance. Furthermore, go to this page on the European Sunday Alliance. They tell us a joint statement of the European Sunday Alliance on the occasion of the annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday, March 3rd, 2021. And it says on March 3rd, 321 AD, Emperor Constantine decreed Sunday to be a day of rest protected by law. They're pointing back 1700 years when Emperor Constantine pushed on the people a Sunday law and it was about work-life balance. And you can see below this down where the blue is here. This is especially relevant in times where the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated existing challenges of digitalization by intensifying work and extending working hours, thus putting a healthy work-life balance at risk for more people. So again, the European Sunday Alliance, the National Catholic Register, Vatican News are all telling us that Sunday keeping is about work-life balance. And so when it comes before the Senate, and the Senate is talking about a 32-hour work week because people can't go to church on Sundays, it's really the same agenda. Whether it's coming from Protestants or apostate Protestants who are not Catholic or whether it's coming from Catholics. In this work of Sunday keeping, Protestants and Catholics alike are coming into union. And not only union, but of course we can't forget the trade unions. Again, this was written 120 years ago. Listen to what it says because we don't want to forget the auto workers unions and all the... All the other unions that are coming together it says the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been since the world began so what's going to bring on the time of trouble well it has to do with unions let me give you an example of how the unions can actually destroy it. but i will show to you why unions are going to bring on a time of trouble Bernie Sanders, again, he's promote posing a 32-hour work week. I want to bring you back to Bernie Sanders because it says this bill is aiming to redefine American work-life balance so that they can go to church on Sunday. It's about Sunday keeping, Sunday work-life balance. But what about this railroad strike that almost took place about a year and a half ago? It says um, it, says it would have just brought the whole entire economy to a halt. But it says work-life balance, not wages, is driving a potentially massive railroad strike. Who was it that was behind this? Well, Bernie Sanders. And what does Bernie Sanders talk about? Well, who, who is he rallying? Tells us Bernie Sanders is rallying, striking, striking federal workers in nod to the Pope. Remember, Catholics and Protestants alike will unite. It doesn't matter whether you're on the right side of the Senate or on the left side of the Senate. 76% say yes, we should have a 32 hour work week while 4% are against it. It looks really good to the people for the most part. And of course, who's behind it all? Well, Bernie Sanders praises Pope Francis. Remember when the Vatican visit when Pope Francis came? Well, Bernie Sanders was excited that the Pope was coming. He's behind a lot of this. He is a Catholic. And um, regarding this rail strike and the rail unions, it tells us Sanders blocks the proposal to force rail unions to accept labor deal. So the unions will bring on a time of trouble such as never was. We've learned this 120 years ago, we were told these things. But listen down below, it says the last thing we need is a shutdown of this nation's rail service. Furthermore, in the green, it says a massive rail strike that will virtually shut down our economy. Republican aide said Sanders' objection makes a strike more likely. Bernie wants a strike, the aide said. Local unions would still have to negotiate some of the finer details of labor agreements if the Burwicker resolution were adopted, but the broad outlines of an industry-wide labor deal would be set. So, Bernie wants a strike. Bernie wants to shut down the entire economy in order to make that happen. And that's what we're looking at right now, is that it would bring on a time of trouble such as never was. And it's not wages, but it's work-life balance that is driving this potential railroad strike. Working on Sunday's effects on safety, health, and work-life balance. 
They don't want people working on Sundays. They want to make Sunday a mandatory holiday. See, letter five from Ellen White, 1904, talks about the time being fast coming when the controlling power of the labor unions will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. Now, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 that present truth and Bible prophecy is given so that we might be able to take heed, to understand that there's a time coming where we need to be warned on what to do. And one of those warnings and instructions has to do with our people knowing and understanding when to take their families away from the cities. And that's been a call that's been going on for several years to take our families away from the cities. Come out of her, my people. The church is fornicating with the state. The problem of buying and selling will become a very serious one. I just want to share with you a few more things here about this Sunday issue before I close here. But Sunday, a work free Sunday for the future of Europe. It's not just America who's trying to do this, but Europe. Work free Sundays. European Alliance is a broad network of more than 100 national Sunday alliances, trade unions, employers organizations, civil society associations, churches, and religious communities in the European Union. And you can see down below, I've got highlighted that it's for better work-life balance. Sundays, there is all, there is somebody that is working in a large way. And I want to just play this video here about some of the unions. This is Klaus Heger, he represents 500 million union employees. Just listen to what he has to say. As a trade union organization representing more than 5 million workers across Europe, I think we join the European Sunday Alliance in calling for the maintenance of synchronized free resting time for workers and their families. I wish us all a good work-free Sunday Enjoy. Yeah. So hundreds of millions of people getting ready for better work-life balance, work-free Sundays, and he's representing 500 million union employees. You see, it's not just Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, but it's I mean, it's a huge movement. It's not just the United States, but it's Europe. It's it's worldwide. And what do we read here? It says the church appeals to the strong arm of civil power. The church, whether it's Protestants or whether it's whether it's Papists, it says in this work, Papists and Protestants unite. So the left and the right, Bernie and Donald Trump can unite under this movement as the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided. The law will be invoked against commandment keepers. Those who really keep the commandments, really keep the Sabbath, they will be threatened with fines and imprisonment. This was written again 120 years ago. This is prophecy. This is nothing new. This is just something that we were told way beforehand that we've forgotten. You know, the Bible says, remember the way that you were led in the past. We have nothing to fear except that we shall forget the way that the Lord has led us in the past. Again, unions vow total shutdown of French economy as Macron moves to increase retirement age. Keep this in mind, French unions are vowing to bring the country to a standstill. Remember, unions are going to bring on a time of trouble such as never was. They can bring countries to a standstill to protest against pension reforms. Of course, they don't want to work more, more years. He wants to move the retirement age from 62 to 64. Retirement is the act of or fact of leaving one's job and ceasing to work. And um, the Sabbath talks about ceasing to work. We're to cease to work on a Sabbath. And so what are they pushing for? Well, of course, they're going to push for Sunday laws. That's what they're going to push. That's what they're going to push out of this. That's what's going to come out of this movement. And it might be at the sacrifice of Emmanuel Macron to get this through. And it might be bringing on another Catholic leader or something like that through France or through England or through United States or whoever it was. You know, we are told these things like France's president is a zombie Catholic. I, I will come back to some of these things. I just... I want to talk about these things in further videos. And there's one more thing I'd just like to just share briefly. It has to do with the Heritage Foundation, Project 2025, talking about the next presidency, aiming to reduce, reshape government if conservatives win the presidency. And of course, this is the right side. This is, this is not the left. This is not Bernie Sanders, but the Heritage Foundation. 
but they're uniting. Papists and Protestants are uniting. Project 2025 is a far-right plan to purge and reshape the U.S. federal government in the event of a Republican victory in the 2024 United States presidential election. So who's the one that they're planning to unite behind? Of course, it's Donald Trump. I'm going to move on to a couple things here. I want to close this out, but if you look at this 2025 mandate for leadership, the conservative promise, there's a section in here called the Department of Labor and Related a Agencies. It's run by Jonathan Barry. And that's, he's he's worked with Donald Trump in times past. He's, he's worked in, in Donald Trump's thing. But in this section of the Project 2025, there's a section entitled Sabbath Rest. Like God ordained the Sabbath as a rest day. And it's not talking about the seventh day. It's talking about Sunday. Sunday keeping. See, MSNBC talking about the Project 2025 making faith the government's job. They're moving it into the hands of the government. Project 2025 appears to call on the next Republican president to draw distinctions between parts of the law as religious and non-religious. Well, if you've ever read the Constitution, you understand the First Amendment. It says no law shall be made in respect to religion or in respect to your freedom of speech or in respect to the freedom of the press. But yet, Project 2025, these conservatives are telling us that we're going to make distinction between religious laws and non-religious laws. How can they make religious laws? Well, they have to make void the Constitution, which I could go into. I'm not going to go into that too far in this one. But again, Barry worries that God ordained the Sabbath as a day of rest. And until very recently, the Judeo-Christian tradition sought to honor that mandate by moral and legal regulation of work on that day. And blames consumerism and secularism for the decline in Sabbath observance. I'll go over secularism in another video. I want to share with you some of that. But that's what they're up against. And they want to move to Sunday. Sunday keeping. Sunday by law. That's the agenda of Project 2025. And so let's remember these things. Keep these things in mind. And let these things be ever in our mind. So that we are continually preaching the present truth especially with regards to the third angel's message the third angel's message which is written in revelation chapters 14 verses 9 to 13 of course comes with the first and second angel about fearing god and worshiping him and preaching the gospel and preaching babylon has fallen but finally also with respect to the people who have the faith of jesus and keep the commandments and those who take the mark of the beast and there is a people who will have no rest day or night who take the mark and that's what the Bible says. No rest. And uh, we understand God gave a day of rest. Remember these things. The leaders of the Sunday movement may advocate reforms which the people need. A lot of this looks good. Principles which are in harmony with the Bible. Yet while there is with these a requirement which is contrary to God's law, his servants cannot unite with them. As God's people, we cannot unite with them. This is Great Controversy, page 587, 588. They told us about all these things before they come to pass. And it says, Nothing can justify them in setting aside the commandments of God for the precepts of men. And I believe that a lot of this is going to be lost. We're going to lose out on a but lot of these things. And um, we're not going to recognize why. But uh, losing their religion. Remember Donald Trump was talking about, we want to bring people back to church. We want to give the people back power. And I'm not going to let it happen that people are going to fall away from churches and we read about the we saw the con the the senate talking about how church attendance is on decline we also saw that lady the senator talking about how church attendance is on decline we need a moral re rebirth in america and sunday would bring a moral rebirth well it's all over the news right now losing their religion why churches are on the decline clergy warn of doom spiral as church attendance drops off at a record rate you know these are things that are coming and Project 2025 wants to bring back people into the church. Now, I'm going to share with you more of this as we continue. But this is it for now. Just make sure that you like, subscribe, share these videos. And we will get the next video to you as soon as we can. Okay? So just please help in sharing these things. And God bless you and God be with you. Till the next time I see you.